Hi, welcome back to the Cousin Sound channel. And if you follow my recent vlogs, you will know that I was going to build a synth for my son as a Christmas present. Well, here it is. Project 920. Okay, what we'll do, we'll uh, move in a little bit closer to the synth so you can actually see it a bit more clearly. And then I'll give you a, an overview of what's in there. And then I think we'll probably finish with uh, a demo of what it sounds like and a development on, on what you've just heard there. Um, and then maybe in later videos I'll look at some of the modules in a little bit more detail and explain where they come from and how I put them together. So yeah, let's have a closer look at Project 920, the concept behind it, and just a kind of a, an overview of what's in there. Here we have Project 920 in a little closer up so we can see some of the detail. Taking all the patch cables out so you can actually see what's on the modules, each panel. Um, and if you're looking at those, then you probably spotted that nothing is labelled. Well, when I discussed the concept behind this with my son, one of the things that he said was that he'd like to have a go at doing his, his own labelling and graphics. Ah! But how does he know what label to put on which knob and switch, etc., if none of it's labelled in the first place? I've already thought of that. And I've written a user manual. And inside the user manual, you can see I describe each module, label it up, and explain a little bit on how to use it just so that you can get started. So yeah, armed with the user manual and his own imagination, perhaps he will be able to do some uh, interesting labels and graphics on here for himself. There you go. In order to save a bit of space, it, we want, he wanted a, a really basic setup, something that got him started without being overly complicated um, but I also wanted to give him something that, that didn't get a little bit too um, familiar or, or, or too repetitive too quickly. So I wanted to put enough in there so that there was enough variation to actually be able to play around with, with different sounds. It's still going to be a bit limited, but there you go. So what I've done is... My original Project 9, and there's a whole series on, on the original Project 9, was me taking what I built in my little boxes, which all, or well, most, run off 9 volt batteries, and put, the, put that into a very basic modular system. So what Project 920 is, is what I've learnt from my first Project 9, plus what I've learnt from building Project 12, the big thing in the background here, this this thing, um, but sticking to the kind of the the Project 9 very simple synth system, uh, uh, maximizing what I've done. I've tried to maximize the amount of compact space available with what you can do with a single rail 9 volt supply, and put enough modules in there to keep the interest going. So some of the modules, have, some of the panels have got two modules in. We'll start at this end and I'll explain what's in here. At the bottom here is the power supply. Now another thing that we talked about was would it run off batteries? If I flick the switch up, you should see the green light comes on. That's because there is a 9 volt battery in there. But as we thought when we first discussed this, it doesn't last very long. And realistically, if you're going to try and run it off batteries, then you probably want to have some kind of more beefy rechargeable system in there. Flick the switch down, and it switches it to this input here. Obviously, there's no light on because there is no input. Um, 
but that is a 12 volt DC supply that drives what is inside there is a, a 9 volt regulated power board. Um, so that provides the power. Um, I will be doing some more videos that, that look at some of this in more detail. Um, so we'll we'll kind of I'll show you what sits behind these at some point. But for now, this is just just the overview. As I say, we're double up on the panels. Above the power supply is a low pass gate, so you've got a CV control and input and output. Um, and it's kind of it's like a vac. Well, it is a vactrol. It's a passive module. This one. It's a vactrol. But it has um, a kind of a some filtering on there, like a low pass filtering, uh, passive low pass filtering built into it. Um, so you you get a little bit more of that kind of bit bit west coasty type feel. Moving along, the next one along is a three channel mixer. Now I tried a couple of designs and and decided that this one actually suited this system best. So. Those first three channels, that's actually a, a passive mixer. But then they pass into a LM386 uh, amplifier, which is a small chip that gives you, I've used the the smallest power one, it's about quarter watt or something like that. Um, it's great, provides a lovely line output, and uh, it's it actually, will drive a speaker um, provided you don't want too much grunt out of it so that allows you to kind of mix some of the voices that, that are coming out of the other modules moving along from that this is a it's another passive module it's a patch bay similar to the patch bay that I had on the first project 9 um, you can go and have a look on on the playlist on that and find out what that is and it is literally sockets joined together it's a bit like those um, starfish type uh, splitters that you get. So there's no buffering or anything. And the way I've wired it is if you plug into the top one, then it connects it to all six sockets. As soon as you plug anything into the bottom one, so that, that's a one by six. As soon as you plug anything into the bottom input, it splits them and it becomes one by three plus one by three. So some options for how you can um, split and combine um, signals. The next module along, now this is <coughs> one that I already have in Project 12. And in Project 12 it's known as the Octivator. In actual fact what you've got is there's a saw and pulse VCO on the top. And then on the bottom... I have a octave sub octave generator um, and you can switch either you can switch the source signal in with the first switch and then subsequent sub octaves up to three octaves below whatever pitch you set on the VCO. Moving along from that, another dual panel. This one at the top here, we have an attack release envelope generator. Um, and we have a trigger input and an output. But this switch, if you switch this in, it will set an internal trigger on there. So basically you end up with a, a looping envelope. Below that, we have a voltage control filter with cutoff and resonance. And we have we can have CV control in there, and obviously the input and output. But with this switch, flick this switch down, and it will connect internally the envelope directly to the filter, so the the envelope becomes dedicated to the filter. Saves on patch cables, I suppose. Then moving along to the end small panel. This one, this is a, it's my favourite VCO. It's the 4046 square wave VCO with pitch control, CV input, square wave output, and it also has the modulation input, which basically, um, 
well, you, you can get some nice, freaky, almost sci-fi type sounds. Then below that, because again, this is another dual module, is a Vactrol. So it's a Vactrol acting like a voltage control amplifier, and you can adjust the CV level with this control here. So that's kind of Vactrol VCA type thing. But again, that's a passive module, so that one's not drawing any power. And then, to make it really usable, on the end here, we have a Baby 8 sequencer. So we've got an 8-step sequencer. So you've got the pitch controls for each of the steps, and I'll need these to tell you which step is playing. Um, speed control at this end and then you get a CV out now I've taken the gate out um, but the gate it's not a gate signal from each of the steps I generate a gate signal from the it's a 555 timer that provides the clock for this and the gate signal is generated from the clock and I've got two I've got one that's that produces roughly 8 volts and then I've got another output that produces 5 volts probably fractionally under 5 volts um, but that makes it more compatible with external commercial equipment you're less likely to do damage with that uh, there's a reset button which basically you hit that it'll just send it wherever it's at it'll send it back to the step 1 and then this other button here this is useful for when you're actually setting it up this is a step button so you can actually manually step between each of the 8 outputs and then tune whatever you're doing. On the end here, this well, this is, is basically the, the run stop switch. If you flick it up, it will basically connect. It's already running, but it'll it'll connect the 555 clock to the sequencer. If you flick it down, it brings this socket into play, and you can use an external clock. To drive the sequencer so if you've got external equipment like um, something like a, a, a beat step or a, a Korg SQ1 or something like that you should be able to drive the sequencer with your external clock so in summary working his way back down you've got an eight step sequencer you have a square wave VCO and a triangle and pulse wave VCO so it's a dual VCO system you have a Vactrol and a low pass gate so dual VCAs you have a looping envelope you have a VCF you have a sub octave generator a patch panel and a three channel mixer and that is a basic setup of project 920 DIY modular analog synth let's hear a little more of what it's like in action Thank you. 